<laughs> hey, this is Matt. <laughs> this is Billy. And this is a special episode. This is, uh, I don't know, a... Mini? Um, minicast? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. This is replacing a blog cast where we read a study, and instead we're just going to talk shortly about, you know, a question we have or a concern we have or a venting we have. <laughs> we're going to try to talk shortly, but, you know, with Billy, there's no telling. It's, it's going to go an hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, the, the question, and, and I'm going <sighs> to... Y'all pray for me. I'm going to try not to get sassy on this one. So it, it, let me let me go ahead and just dog on myself because that'll be a good that'll be a humbling experience for me. I used to as a Calvinist appeal to mystery a lot. So and, and recently I heard this in several conversations, which is what brought it up and why we wanted to talk about it. I would say I have this this systematic understanding of Scripture beginning to end. It, it is consistent. If you accept total depravity, then the the other four points of tulip fall into place. It is consistent, and and anything that I couldn't really understand in Scripture, you know what? There's just some things that we're not going to know on this side of heaven, and I'm sure some of you have heard this before. There's just some things we're not going to get, we're not going to know on this side of heaven, and uh, I understand. I have a consistent understanding of Scripture, and and if I don't, if I don't know that stuff, well, that's that's just probably a mystery that we'll find out later, and I'm I'm fine with that. And now that makes me want to hit my head against my desk. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah what are your thoughts on that billy <laughs> did i ever use that against you yeah i'm sure you did <laughs> i could pull up that old old file and uh, probably good. search through it just type in mystery and <laughs> yeah, yeah you need to, that control f function because that was a uh, hundred plus pages of conversation <laughs> yeah the the book of emails part one <laughs> mm-hmm. so i hear it too all the time where you you hear it a lot in the debate of Calvinism, whether it's from our side or even, or I don't want to say our side because not many people are not technically our side or our understanding, but <laughs> people who, who believe in free will versus people who believe in, you know, God's sovereignty and electing people of salvation before the foundation of the world. You hear both sides saying, you know, a lot of people who, who just haven't really studied the subject say, well, we just can't know how free will works. It's in the Bible. So a sovereignty and election is in the Bible. We just, we just. On this side of heaven, it's just a mystery, and we can never know. We just have to appeal to not being able to understand. God didn't make it very clear for us, so we can't know. And I just want to bang my head. Yeah, exactly. I, it, it's a total cop out. I'm sorry. I it just, it's a lazy cop out. It is, and and I get it. I understand the desire to want to just rely on God. I mean, it is kind of a faithful position. I'll hand you that to say, you know, I I I, I have this consistency, and God's got the rest. I'm not going to worry about it. The thing is, there are answers to those questions. I think Billy and I have talked about it before. Prior to coming to how we understand salvation, soteriology, prior to our understanding now, both of us would look at Scripture and there were places where we just didn't understand it. Right. And those holes, we don't have them anymore. And, and, and uh, we're not patting each other on the back. We, you know, we're not like high-fiving like, yeah, we got it figured out. <laughs> we're, we're actively <laughs> – you sound like that. I don't sound like that. <laughs> We are actively looking for those holes because we want to make sure that, you know, we can answer uh, the questions that we find. But what we're finding is that if you're willing to look, if you're willing to submit to Scripture and what it's teaching, and you're willing to shape what you understand to what Scripture says, not the other way around. You're not going to put your filter, you're not going to put your, your Calvinist glasses on and then read Scripture, and you're going to skip over the stuff that doesn't make sense. If you're willing to look at Scripture and let it shape your understanding, there are answers. Mm-hmm. And and I just uh, I I don't know. How, how do you yeah, know? I hear it about the whole predestination and election thing. We, we both um, had that all mixed up, you know, in the past. And really, yeah. we, we knew that we knew that there was a truth. We didn't really know how to explain the truth. We were faithful to God, nonetheless. We were trying to explain it, but fortunately, we you know trusted in God and sorted it out together just you know threw away all of our presuppositions and came came to understand what the truth was um you see it in in once saved always saved or eternal security people they they look at these these things that appear to be conflicting kind of like the thing i showed you earlier when i took the picture where (laughs) somebody my wife was doing a study on john 15 and, and the notes say because we know that nobody can be can perish when they're in christ what do you think john 15 actually means you know where it says abide in me and i will abide in you he who does not abide in me you know and produce fruit will be 
cast out and yeah way to way to uh, isogeet your uh your yeah. theology on that Golly. you know so you you're like well we just we just uh, you know i'm gonna stick with you can't ever lose your salvation and the other verses are just a mystery which is something we can't understand no they it all is perfectly congru is congruent the right way i don't think that's the right word cohesive <laughs> no i don't think so either cohesive yes that's that's better <laughs> i knew it was a c <laughs> it's, confusing. it's all no. it's all cohesive and fits perfectly together um and w- when you truly when you truly understand it it's just like it for, for for me it's it's just like how did i ever not see that before it's so simple one of the other pet peeves venting that i always get is the whole atonement thing and and the atonement like thing that, what's it remind the, me the, uh, people who can't explain how the atonement is unlimited, but yet not everybody's saved. They're just like confused. And, you know, the Calvinists start doing scriptural jujitsu on all the verses that talk about Christ dying for the world. The other people start doing jujitsu on other passages. It's just not understanding how it works. But when you actually understand it, it magnifies God and it magnifies. It's just like, well, duh. I mean, it's everything that you did in the Old Testament, Lord. <laughs> That's an. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. I, I, so, coming back to mystery for a minute, I there are some things that are mysterious, right? Like, can if someone were to put a gun to your head and say, explain the Trinity and how God is three persons and one being perfectly so that they can understand it. I, <laughs> I would struggle with that. I don't think there's anybody on the planet who would get that exactly right. It's mysterious. And, and I think <clears throat> when we experience him in a glorified body and we can actually be in his presence without just being burnt to a little crisp, I think then we'll understand a little better. I don't know that we'll ever fully grasp it. That's mysterious. That's fine. But is there any reason? Is there is there any place in scripture? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna appeal to Billy's. Uh, I think he's got more scripture memorized than me. Is there any place in scripture you can think of, Billy, that says that it, we shouldn't be able to understand his plan for salvation? I mean, actually, pretty pretty simply. Can you think of anything that says we shouldn't be able to do that? No, actually, I, I'm trying to think of a passage that actually says the opposite. How would you search for it? So, I mean, since we're on the topic, how would you search for something Surely like the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret counsel to his servants, the prophets. That's a good one. So basically, the Lord is going to... He, he doesn't, like, keep things hidden from us. He, he wants to tell us. <laughs> he does have timing. Uh, we know that Christ was a mystery, like the the actual work of Christ, what he was going to do. Mm-hmm. We, we knew in the Old Testament, you know, that there was going to be a Messiah, that he was going to die. A lot of things that people didn't understand, but that we didn't know who it was when it, when he was actually we actually did know when he was coming. If they would have understood, they would have known known the day he was coming. <laughs> have you ever studied that in Daniel? Where by the, the day the, the the weeks the yeah yeah well yeah. The, yeah by literally like the literal day you would have known when the Messiah came into Jerusalem. It's amazing, yeah. But <laughs> it, it says that Christ came at the perfect timing to be revealed. So the gospel already existed, but that but that specific you know aspect of the mystery, the mystery of the church, that everybody since Adam who has trusted in the Lord has been part of the body of Christ, has been in Christ, the Messiah that has been in the world hidden and preaching the gospel and, and enlightening all people to the gospel. You know, he was a mystery. The son was a mystery, but the son revealed himself and we all know. God wants us to love him and he wants us to know him and he wants us to, the more we know him, the more we love him and the more we want to follow him and obey him and glorify him. So I don't think he's naturally, high. I mean, there there are some things that we just don't know, like are demons and fallen angels the same thing? <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, we gotta have a we gotta have a uh, conspiracy uh, episode just for fun. Just, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I I think there there are some some mysteries like that. Absolutely. What? Uh, so a friend of mine, I was texting him today actually, and and he said he made a comment similar to you know there's just some things we can't know, and it's to me I'm like, uh, what are these things you're talking about? <laughs> and it, he had no idea that I was about to jump all over him. No, <laughs> uh, I love him. He's a good friend. Josh, if you're listening, what's up? But he was, he, he, he rattled off. He, he was the one who came up with the Trinity. I, I fired back. Yeah, I guess, you know, there's things like we can't understand fully what happened with the fall of the angels. We, we can, we can understand, you know, we can kind of get, take some educated guesses on when it happened and the fact that Lucifer was trying to put himself at the level of God, but I, we don't know the details. We really don't. That's a mystery. That's fine. But as far as 
understanding the means of salvation, the fact that it was written in, in little Greek, Koine Greek, it, it, that's the common language. The fact that it was mit, written for just your common people, that alone seems to imply that God wanted just the common people to be able to read it and understand it. I think we need to clarify mystery versus just unknown. When it, when when scripture in 30 different spots talks about election and then where obviously it's trying to teach you something and then saying, well, we can't really understand these things that it's teaching us. <laughs> it's a mystery. That's the cop out. But when when the scripture yeah, just isn't absolutely. like clear on on how Lucifer fell or when he fell, um, that's just an unknown. I mean, obviously it's a mystery, but it's unknown. It's not, there's nowhere in scripture that really gives us details on it. But the, when it starts giving us details and you just start saying, well, it's a mystery. I can't understand it. That's what we're really talking about. <laughs> yeah, that's a good distinction. Uh, mystery versus unknown. Same with the Trinity. There's, uh, we just don't, it's unknown, the full nature of God, like how that works. Obviously we know his attributes and his character because he, he told us. But um, yeah, I like that. That's good. So yeah, we're, we're, we're talking more about using this idea of a mystery. Like you said, it talks about election plenty of places. Using the idea that it's, oh, it's a mystery and how it works. We, can, we can't know. To dodge the responsibility of iron sharpening iron. That's where I run into it the most is they just don't want to talk about it. They, they'd rather mm-hmm. not talk about it because it's hard and it's going to challenge what they've got figured out. Regardless of if what they have figured out or not is right or not. How does it say that God desires all people to be saved and he takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but yet he is predestined certain individuals to salvation and not others? Well, it's just a mystery of two wills. <laughs> yeah, it's a... Which, I mean, uh, you know, I'm not going to dog on two wills too much because we do, we do kind of <laughs> talk about that. You no, know, yeah, exactly. Why is it that he says uh, in... Let's see, what's another good example? Uh, John 3.16. All who believe will be saved. All the believing will be saved. You know, and it's a, for God so loved the world that all who believe will be saved. Why, why does that not mean that anybody who believes out of the, out of the entire world, why doesn't that mean everybody? And, and the, the Calvinists <laughs> look at it and say, well, those, you know, they're totally depraved people. And it's really, it's talking about these unconditionally elect people. And, you know, and, it's, and we can't really understand how, you know, the, why God chose these other, some people over others. And, and oh, it's just, it's, oh. That's the mystery. That's a big mystery that they rely on. Yeah, why? You know, oh, it's God's will. Before they were good or bad and had done anything good or bad, and not based on anything that they've done or any good works or anything like that, God chose one and not the other. Yep, just oh, abusing Romans that's, 9 and implying yeah, it to everything else. According to his, the mystery of his will. I guess let, let's try to clarify when a good time to appeal to mystery or appeal to the, uh, like, uh, accept the unknown versus... Mm-hmm. I don't know. Do you have a, 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 con, a concise way of explaining that to someone? When is it good to, to say, I don't know, and Scripture doesn't really say, versus I don't understand it, let me back up? Well, let's look at the Trinity real quick. The reason we can't, we would appeal to mystery on how God is one but three persons would, I would say, appeals to the infinite, a finite trying to understand an infinite be- being. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think obviously there's going to be some mystery in understanding that, that idea, that concept, that uh, nature of God. So I think that's one way um, versus if somebody tries to say another one that we always hear, why did, why did you choose God and not your neighbor? It's a mystery. I don't know. I don't know. God, <laughs> God's sovereign will. That it, I don't know. They appeal to mystery or they, they, they would appeal to God just randomly selecting people based on the mystery of his will that's another I mean, to me it's because god gave people choice and one person was decided to choose god and one person didn't we would totally reject the idea that there's something special about one person that that right. allows them to choose god over someone else we would we would reject the idea that god picked them and empowered them to believe when he didn't empower the other and we would reject the idea that one person got a more powerful dose of witness from God than the other person. Mm-hmm. God doesn't show partiality. That is a, a, a that is specifically stated in, in Scripture that He is impartial and He's not going to pick someone one person over another. He is going to allow them to choose Him or not. He is going to give them the same everything. And and if they right. they follow Him, they seek Him in faith, they will be saved. That's that's the elect. He He, he elected that anybody who seeks Him in faith who humbles themselves to him, 
they'll be saved. Anybody who doesn't mm-hmm. will not. They won't be elect. And Pete, I can hear people yelling at us in the microphone. Oh yeah, but but Paul got a vision of Jesus. If if somebody came back from the dead and witnessed to me, that'd be stronger than if just somebody alive witnessed to me. Yeah. What what did what did Lazarus? Well, I mean, uh, the rich man. What was he saying? He's like, hey, Abraham, let let Lazarus stick his toe in here and cool the water off. And uh, let him go back to my brothers and tell them about this. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, send that dead guy over to my brothers let, let so he can witness and make sure that they're safe. And, and if they didn't believe in in Moses, then they won't believe in somebody who rises from the dead. The same spirit, the same witness in every single instance, whether it's you speaking from being born again through the spirit, whether it's the somebody reading the scripture by themselves, mm-hmm. it's the spirit witnessing, whether somebody is sitting in the jungle and looking up at the stars and realizing, wow, there's a creator and he has put it on my heart that I, I know right from wrong. And I, I know that my conscience is telling me that I can't, I can't do his standards that I know are, are in my heart. And I can just rest on him. That's the same witness. That's the same spirit. It's, it's all the same spirit. And it's this God's witness of himself and the gospel that is behind. That is the power. It's, it's not a specific person. It's not a pers- pers- specific persuasion. You know, Paul's vision, he still had to obey. If you read later on in chapter in, in Acts where he's talking to one of the people who arrested him, he's like, he, he explains his story and he says, and I obeyed the heavenly vision. So Paul actually had a will and had a choice in whether to obey when Christ appeared to him. Yeah. So just to bring it all back to as the body of Christ, we have a responsibility that we've gotten away from to... As, uh, to, to sharpen each other, mm-hmm. to make disciples. But even on a, a discipleship seems, or to me, implies a teacher and a disciple. It, it, it applies a hierarchy. But even on the same level, if if you're a teacher at your church, for instance, let's say you teach Sunday school, and you refuse to engage anybody on, uh, on scripture, you know, they, I don't want to get in an argument. You know, we just can't understand that. I'm sorry, brother, but that that's the wrong attitude. If you're a Peter and and somebody else is a Paul or you're a Paul and somebody else is a Peter yeah. and you see them teaching something wrong and following something wrong, you might want to step up like Paul did to Peter. Peter, the, the, the leader of the apostles who had been around longer than Paul had, who had sat with Christ and been called the, the little pebble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> Paul stood up and taught him. Yeah, he opposed him to his face. Now... We, we should do it in love and kindness and ju- with all the fruits of the Spirit. Absolutely. And that's probably a good, uh, another uh, mini short, yes. whatever we're calling these episodes. Yeah, we need Christian to talk conduct about. Absolutely. and debates. Uh, both within yeah. and, with, and outside the church. Y- y- definitely, fruits of the Spirit when you're talking to another brother. And it can get frustrating. It can be hard. I literally lost weight when I was changing from Galvanism to whatever we call ourselves now. Because running helped me get through, like work through some stuff in my mind because my body was occupied. There wasn't anything around to distract me. So I ran a lot and I, and I yeah. wasn't always hungry. So I lost weight. And uh, so what I'm saying is we need to debate some more so I can lose a little more weight. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, appealing to mystery just to get out of having a discussion, I think, is simply wrong. For me, I would be heavily convicted if I did that because for me, that would be a complete lie. <laughs> I know there's truth that I want to find. Yeah, if if you don't know, that's then search. Open your Bible, search. Don't just Google because there's so many things out there. Uh, find somebody that you trust. Uh, if you trust us, send us an email. We'll help you. What if they yeah. Google us? Then I, I feel like you just <laughs> <laughs> don't just randomly Google people. That's just that's that's bad. Be there's a Berean so many... and check yeah. everything against Scripture. If, yeah. you, Google, feel free to Google. I think that's fine. Yeah, but but don't take one side's word for it. You need to go back to yeah. scripture. And you need to try to understand it and get multiple input, uh, multiple sources. Um, but yeah, okay. Before we we just drone on and on and on. Anything else you want to say, or you want to go ahead and wrap? Nope. You can find us at biblebrodown dot com. Email us at biblebrodown at gmail dot com. Stay tuned. Every week we have two episodes a week: one regular bo- podcast and one regular or not regular one blogcast where we read a study. Or we're going to do some of these occasionally now where we just talk about some extra topics shortly. Yeah. So with that, we hope you guys all have a great week, and may you continue to study the word and rightly divide the truth. Peace.